Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, winners, spinners and cardinal sinners, welcome along to the Joe Spivey YouTube channel where we discuss books and little else. Uh, and welcome back to, again, what has to be phrased, uh, another of our random reviews. Folks, today we're going to be looking at um, Matthew Debatua's 2018, uh, what were we going to say here? Um, stylized non-fiction self and i uh, it's essentially one long extended sort of rumination and and diary entry um but first of all of course you know about joe spivey the um scotland yard jack in office joe spivey the busybody joe spivey the sensualist joe spivey the corrupter joe spivey the the scandalous uh, uh, imbiber of um alcoholic libation but now indeed you need to become acquainted with Joe Spivey, the removals man, um, because obviously it's been uh, uh, long touted, but finally Grand Viceroy Spivey has indeed upped sticks and buggered off from Kingston upon Hull, and he's on his merry way, and he's got a van full of all sorts of rickety rubbish, um, uh, which he is now uh, propelling at a speed of about 70 miles an hour down the motorway. But yes, I have been um, getting my hands at least metaphorically dirty and a little uh, uh, scarred and scraped, and so I'm feeling um, oddly masculine. I, I, um, I, I wasn't very useful. Um, I'm much still much better around the dinner table than I am on a building yard or in the, on the factory floor. But nonetheless, I, uh, I, I still have enough test sufficient amounts of testosterone in my system to um, treasure manliness. And I have been extraordinarily manly over the last day or so. But anyway, without much further ado, let us look at self and I. Um, Matthew Diabetua is a, um, I suppose you'd better call him a novelist. He's got two or three books out, I think, mainly focusing on uh, science fiction. Um, but he also, I believe, still is Professor of Creative Writing at the University of East Anglia. Um, is the title I want to give him. I'm not sure. I'll have to follow up on that, but I, I believe so. And, uh, of course, Will Self is a, a much more prominent novelist um, who came to fame or whatever, who who, who um, uh, uh, peppered the literary scene mainly in the 80s and the 90s, I think, and then uh, had flirted with winning the Booker Prize in 2010 um, and is now just an undead white man, as he is self-described. Um, he has, along, you know, many, many attributes, of course, but he has to be credited as, be, as comprising one third of the triumvirate of people that um, uh, 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 brought about the great Joe Spivey's intellectual edification. Um, his were the articles that I first picked up upon in Esquire magazine, um, who showed me that writing was not just... Uh, merely a way of, of transmitting info, um, but they were indeed, uh, they, they could indeed be regarded as artifice and um, something to be cherished in and of themselves, regardless of what they said. You know, he's a, he's a, um, an ornate stylist. He, he is, a, 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 again, a self-avowed sesquipedalian. He uses words like tigisivation, floxinook and hilipilification, and um, goodness knows what else, um, desalination. Um, and so his style can be a little bit... Um, it, it, it can sort of put people off, um, but I find it's, I find that the, the early short story is a little bit odd. Um, but but the the, the neo modernist trilogy of Umbrella, Shark, and Phone um, is um, infinitely rewardable, and um, so yes, yeah, it should, should be something that should be on every considerate individual's shelves, I do believe. But this isn't about Will Self, really. Um, this is uh, yeah Matthew Diabeja, who was a graduate in the nineties, I think ninety two or four. This begins. And um, by pure luck, he manages to become the in-house amanuensis, the resident amanuensis, the writer's assistant to Will, who has just gone through a breakup um, at One Hall Cottages in Suffolk, I do believe. Um, it's, a, it's a very, very strange place. Um, they are completely hedonistically dependent on, on uh, mind-altering substances, lots of alcohol, lots of special cigarettes stuffed um to the to the to the teeth with marijuana um and opiates and mushrooms mushrooms are opiates joe and other things such as that um and it's uh, yeah i mean it's it's subtitled a memoir of literary ambition um but it i don't know I, I don't really know it's it i don't know how seriously matthew wants us to take this um he uh, yeah, it's, it's a very 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 bizarre book it, it, it's very it's it's nomadic very very peripatetic it, it hasn't really got much concentrated endurance on one subject to the next um sometimes we get a paragraph of 15 uh, uh, where he charts 15 minutes sometimes and then and then we're rushed to the future um it's 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 not really very uh, chronologically inclined not not saying that it has to be but but it it lacks that um that 
you know, that, that concentration and that diligence on a writer's behalf um, to just kind of sit down and get things done. It, it seems to be a little bit of a medley of, of very many things. So I've got, got some sections I want to highlight. Um, it deals primarily with uh, Debatua's inability to get together a manuscript and his um, reluctance to um, be alone, as it were, because, of course, writing as... Mr. Connolly said is the social act of the solitary man, I think it was, and um, Cyril Connolly is referenced many times in this book, and Dupaitua can do that, but but doesn't think that it's poten a potential viable career option. He wants to, that, that, that similar um, trope of the new writer who wants to just <clears throat> sort of pour his guts out onto the page rather than writing a story. Um, I, I wish I could go around to um, fellow young novelists and writers who, 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 who think that they have to somehow um, materialise uh, uh, the entire world onto the page rather than just writing a, a reasonably compelling story. Um, I, I, I wish I could set them on the right track, but but twas ever thus. This is how people are, isn't it? Um, <clears throat> so I've got some sections I want to I, I, I want to read out and to pick apart. Um, there is, as ever with people that are published, there is raw talent um, writ large in this book. It, 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 it is obvious that <clears throat> Debater has read the canonical classics and has read the right books and has a a, a, a stylish and humorous and wry turn of phrase um there's clearly something there to be to be of use um but the, but i don't know it, 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 it um stinks of, of undergraduate inattentiveness and um <clears throat> quixotic idealization of things you shouldn't idolize really um but yes let's let's get into the highlighted sections i i did actually um one particular page of the novel fell foul of my thumbs and so um it was was was, was ripped from from the spine but um that that wasn't uh, anything to do with my aggression or anything it just fell apart um but yes uh first of all we're talking about the um the the finality of events obviously this is pre what will self would term bi-directional digital media no mobile phones no um uh, uh, uh no plug-in broadband or internet um and even televisions are looked on askance in this particular book but yeah this is what um debater chooses to highlight first of all. Uh, this memoir covers the three years of 94 to 97, a sliver of history suffused with never againness and no moreness, and perhaps the last moment in the West to largely evade the digital recording of daily life. It was a time when great parties went untweeted, your relationship status was never updated, and the bleakness of London's municipal parks had to be borne without the soft haze of an image filter. Because I cannot queue up the good old days on YouTube, I am writing this down. Now that is glorious, that is both insightful and effective and enjoyable. Um, and one wishes that, that Mr. Abetu focused on that rather more than just uh, 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 picking apart bits of his own manuscript and bits of his own ambition. But yes, um, next up we have um, what uh, one of the, uh, if, if, if you were to boil this book, and you were to left you, you were left with the kind of residual sediment at the bottom. It would be a, a, a sort of a, a rancorous, inexplicable snobbery. The the idea that that producing um, what is loosely termed literary fiction is of uh, is inherently more valuable than mysteries, and 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 also there's a superciliousness towards the reader as well. Sid and Doris literary bonkers, as they're termed. Um, you know those idiotic readers who pay to who you know who, who pay to order books and actually read these texts. How dare they? There's a there is a, a um a uh yeah a, a, a slithering snobbery um but anyway um the, the, there had almost been no talk of readers at the university of east anglia ma in creative writing frankly in those days readers got what they were given readers were basically losers now the opposite is true and writers are the losers constantly trying to insinuate themselves into the affections of the winners the readers my nostalgia for this period is partly due to the sense that the literary novel was still a force in contemporary culture the modern creative writing course includes genre at its worst. It can degenerate into a debate about whether a sadomasochistic erotic novel featuring unicorns and vampires will sell twice as many self-published books as an erotic novel featuring only unicorns. We didn't have these kinds of conversations in the 90s. Then, no one talked about engaging characters, genre, trilogies, or God forbid, whether the protagonist was sympathetic or not. Nor do I remember Professor Malcolm Bradbury puffing on his pipe and opining that what the postmodernist novel required in the post-colonial moment was more unicorns. A sympathetic protagonist, an easy and unassuming prose style, and a strong plot, these were the marks of weakness. Signs of pandering to the reader, and who wants to hang out with that loser? Um, so obviously that's, that's all tongue-in-cheek, but there is the sense that... Um, you can almost write what you want, and this idea of um, um, the commodification of ideas and the marketization of content and literature is um, 
really does sort of punch Mr. Abetua in the stomach. Obviously, he was originally called Matthew Humphreys, but because of a, um, a lineal discovery by uh, an ancestral discovery on his father's side, I think he is of Basque descent and takes the, um, the, 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 the unpronounceable, the, the often unpronounceable surname and um, uses that as a vehicle to, to, to talk about you know, his, his new obsessions and his new life or whatever. Um, so this is, um, he, he gets, he, he has a little go at profundity every now and then, bless him. Um, he, he does a very good job of uh, encapsulating the metaphor, um, which is, a, a you know, those in the know pronounce it metaphor and those those who do not know pronounce it metaphor. But anyway, um, this is, yeah, talking about the metaphor, essentially. Thomas Pratt, in his the History of the Royal Society of London for the Improving of Natural Knowledge said that he wished to rid all scientific writings of this vicious abundance of phrase, by which he meant all figurative language, but metaphor primarily. Metaphor is associative. It connects previously unrelated objects and concepts, puts them in a relationship to increase our understanding of them. Metaphor is alchemical in the way it tr uh, transforms base substances into aesthetic gold. It is magical thinking, mystical and irrational. Um, which is rather nice. I think probably if you gave um, a seven-year-old the word al the word al alchemical, he would probably use it in a similar in, in, a, in a similar fashion. But yes, um, we don't really get an awfully great sketch of Will Self in here. He is most of the time um, stomping around nude or shoveling down lager and special cigarettes. He is um, he he has that um, that 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 uh, really really rebarbative and stymieing uh, 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 snobbery about him and that that. Um, inexplicable irreverence, that snootiness, that selfishness, um, that um, paternal delight in the weakness and inferiority of others, i.e. his amanuensis. Um, not somebody we would like. There, there they are. Um, they they, they um, barter for, for a lobster and each, um, uh, each take a turn taking uh, 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 weird pictures with them on their, on their front lawns or whatever. Um, but this is... Um, Again, we get, we get a decent um, taking a part of or a decent uh, evaluation of some of Will Self's works. Um, one of his shorter stories, or one of his novels, Great Apes, um, is about, it, is, it runs very similar to Dawn of the Planet of the Apes and, and it posits the uh, uh, um, future uh, triumph of apes over humans. Um, and then we get, it, we get Matthew taking it apart. Um, in Great Apes, published a year later, the artist Simon Dykes and his lover Sarah take cocaine on the car deck floor of the ceiling, while upstairs their friend Tony Fige assails a journalist with theories about the new glib. The new glib is, is essentially um, an author's way of writing journalism so as to subsidise creative output. The scene is a repugnant fugue of drugs and drink, adults behaving like unsupervised children, naughty on narcotics and botched sex. Orifices are clogged, watery cocaine mucus mingles with vaginal musk. What a sentence that is. Self-disgust and vituperative satire intermingle. Gussets are soiled. The ceiling and Simon's addictions are contiguous. One flows into another. And that is perhaps what it means to be all at sea. The uncertainty that comes through being carried away by the tide of the times. Um, that's all jolly good. I'm not quite sure what it is he's banging on about, but it's all... Um, it's all mellifluous, isn't it? It's all it's all very uh, therapeutically excellent, and um, yeah, th th there is a sense later on when when there is there is a sadness um, when he departs from uh, one hall cottages um, and sort of goes out into the new world. He doesn't know what on earth it is that he's going to do. Um, he wants to be a writer, of course. He wants to sort of, as I say, boil himself down so that the 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 the, the bedrock. Uh, fundament of his own writing can can come to the fore, um, but this is impossible. And 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 um, yeah, he struggles to get anything written at all. And it's just it's just full of the old undergraduate wistfulness about you know the, the, the limp wristed difficulties of others and all this. It's just it's it it's nice. It's well written, but I just I, I struggle not to shake my head throughout. Um, and this was written in twenty eighteen as well. So I, I think debate is a grown man now. He's he's middle aged. So he's 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 done a good job of. Um, um, exhuming some of the some of the undergraduate wistfulness and woe, um, but but I don't know how useful it is. It's it's a nice. It, I mean, a Christ alive. It's it's written with Joe Spivey in mind. It is somebody who is at a crossroads in life, who wants to 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 earn money by their pen, who wants to um, live his his life nine to five, supine on a bed or at a desk, um, and is surprisingly or, or unsurprisingly as it were unable to, to to earn a living wage as a result of that and um yeah that 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 weird interstice that weird liminal zone that junction between 
university and and the professional world is 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 evoked nicely um but yeah i don't i don't really know it's 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 very very it's deceptively short um this this takes me uh, this it only took me about 24 hours i think so um where was i was expecting it to take a little bit longer because it's about 300 pages but it's um it's it's very very heavily spaced but i was extraordinarily interested um obviously again written with joe spivey in mind because it, it talks about the um dealing with um this is gonna i can't think of a way of, of making this sound kind but but um working class ineptitude the idea that you have to um come out with academic drawl and you have to kind of pop all of your impecunious pustules as it were um i did just think of that on the spur of the moment that was jolly good wasn't it pop your impecunious pustules in order to um sort of feel more actualized in the academic realm and so, so that you can bleed into the uh middle and upper middle classes at university um so that's true he was a he was a he was a, um, a liver puddly and he was a, it was a scouser um and i can do a liver puddly accent but i have to be an astonished middle-aged woman to do it so i'm not going to um not going to sully this video with that lackluster impression. As you can probably tell from the lighting of this damn video, we are about to get a, a huge downpour here in Northern Britain, but I am, um, yes, I've enjoyed this. I've got um, on my on my docket, I do have uh, uh, Austin's Northanger Abbey next in a, a very splendid Penguin classic. Um, I am going to be reading and recording for um, Hannah Arendt's Eichmann in Jerusalem, our fourth instalment of that, that slower, more progressive read-along progressive with the, with, the, with the lowercase p um i'm afraid i reneged on my promises last week because of all this this family turmoil at the moment i, I wasn't able to produce a video on friday but there will be one for you guys who are doing uh, uh, reading eichmann in jerusalem with me um that'll be uh, that'll be available for you for your for your delectation on friday but yes that was um uh, the 2018 book Matthew Debater's Self and I. It's been on my shelves a while and I've, I've read it once before but but not with a pencil in hand and not with my my critical ardour which I deploy on a daily basis now. So yes, I am going to thank you ever so much for watching Booktube and um, yes, uh, uh, say goodbye.